So that's my first musical influence for sure. He's always like in my corner, my number one fan. So he lives here? He lives here. Ah. Yeah. Which leads me to the next question. If you're in Canada, why do you keep coming back to Vegas? <laughs> so my mom died. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and these guys. I met my guests at uh, the Homegrown Songwriter Showcase, which started at the Artisan, it's where I first met them. Uh, we ju you just performed at Soul Belly Barbecue, which is where it currently is residing, down on Main Street. Uh, if you haven't seen my reviews or the live stream of that, definitely check them out on the channel when you're done watching this. One is part-time Canadian, part-time Las Vegan, full-time pun lover. And the other is a Jersey boy, turned desert rat, who also produces dub tracks for Cold Summer Records. We'll be talking about that in a little bit here. Um, new song, Melting Into the Night, is out now, right? Or it's about to be? July 8th. July Next 8th. Friday. By the time this comes out, it'll, it'll be, be out. out. Yes. Um, that's why I wrote out now. <laughs> so, interview's going great. Please welcome to the channel, Jan Jan and James. I did the thing you asked me not to do. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> in that case, James Passmore. Did I say that right? Nice. Um, for those of you that maybe don't know who they are, thank you for watching. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Tell them a little bit more about like what you do in terms of when you hit the stage, what do you bring to the stage, and, and what are you playing, and like that. I'm going to get a drink. Oh, um, when you hit the stage, uh, I'm Jan Jan. I am a singer-songwriter. I was raised here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I love to write my songs. I sing songs. Getting ready to cover songs. Um, and I'm accompanied by James so many times. We collab and mm -hmm. do awesome jams. And before we hit the stage, you said? Just yeah. what we bring to the stage? Yeah. What we bring to the stage. It's um, energy. There we go. What he said. <laughs> Which camera are we looking into? Oh, uh, oh yes, yeah, sorry. There's your audience. That's also your audience. Can I look straight at the mic? Is that like a good? Yeah, sure. Which? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. According to last night from the judges when we won, we bring a vibe. Yes, yes. We so. bring a vibe. <coughs> Pardon me. Smooth. <laughs> yes, uh, the, what she's talking about is that they just nailed a uh, residency at Virgin Casinos a Hotel. Yeah. Inside a particular lounge? The Shag Room. The Shag Room. Yes. Noise. Yes. Yes, so shout out to Sean Eiferman for putting on that contest for us Yeah. So, yes. Eif, give me a call, will you? So, I wanted to talk real quick, first of all. Is your dog still a Bernie Sanders fan? Sometimes. He's dead now. <gasps> so he worships him in heaven. Oh, and wow. His political affiliations still ring true in this guy. Nice. <laughs> um, that leads me to the other question, now that I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess there's no new shows for the other band. You do, you're in the Three Filipinos and their Two White Dogs. Oh, that's hilarious. I love that. Uh, actually, no, he's my friend Matthew. Uh, he was just here. He saw our last show at Soul Belly. We had a nice little jam sesh. Um, he writes songs with me as well. And we'll have a track on my LP coming out. In the future. Nice. Yeah. Pivoting to James. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about a conversation in dub. Let's talk about it. You got stickers. I do. There you go. He has a, he has a podcast alongside... Now, you, you own Cold Summer Records? I am the owner of Cold Summer Records. Yes. There you go. Any artists interested, maybe hit him up. Get yourself a record deal, maybe. Yeah, I specialize in dub and reggae and versions and, okay. and all that good stuff. Can you give me the elevator pitch for what is dub for those that don't know? What is dub? Dub is... You're about to piss off a lot of people. <laughs> am I? Oh, just and like... like uh, some. I have the feeling some dub heads are just going to be like, that's not what it is, or... Sorry? Mm. Okay, go for it. At me. No. At me. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Dub is essentially the engineer's remix of a song. It's the engineer's take on on a version of a song. It's the original remix. It's where DJs come from. It's where hip hop came from. It's where a lot a lot of genres came from. Uh, from dub. Nice. That's, that's my elevator pitch. Generally of reggae, but you can dub anything. Mishmash. Cold summer records. Cold, Cold summer, summer records. records. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, nice. That's right there. It's a little. Uh, a little decoration. <laughs> you get. That's where CDs go when people bring them. And 
Jan Jan has a track now on Cold Summer Records that I produced called Answer, reggae version with a dub version as well. Yes, and stick around because we're going to do a very stripped down version of it upstairs in room six along with a few other tracks. Um, I think you even brought the uke. Yeah. Ukulele. Yeah. Yes, so I'm excited to hear that. And if you want to be on the channel, by all means, hit me up using my email address or the social media link down there for room six. Uh, I can review you. We'll do an interview. All sorts of fun stuff. And uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Also, while you're down there, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any videos or live streams, etc. You know what to do. You're on YouTube. You've heard all this. I appreciate you all. James. Yes. Talk to me about drop off planet Earth. Drop off planet Earth. Is that anything like walk off planet Earth or walk off the Earth? I don't know what that is. The oh, band? The band? Yeah. You what? I want to show you something. It's my shocked face. <laughs> Shut up, band. Yeah, right? Please. Yeah, Please. yeah, like they they've gotten really famous for doing like they all cram on a couch kind of thing and yeah they all, and they all do uh, their songs. Yeah, walk off the Earth is amazing. James. No idea. Yeah, I have some research to do. Yes, it's Walk <laughs> Off the Earth, and, and it's like six months, five months? I don't know. Yeah, they, they're a group. But they're really talented, and they managed to somehow do cover songs that sound unique to yeah, but, but no one is. Yeah. yeah. So, anywho, talk to me about the other band, <laughs> Drop yeah. Off the Earth. Drop Off Planet Earth, or was, Planet Earth yes. a, was a band that morphed out of an original band called Secret Remedy, which lasted quite a while. And then it kind of turned into a different band with some of the same people, some different people. Um, it didn't last very long. Maybe a couple months. We did a few shows in Jersey and then Sounds and that dissipated right. as well. Sounds about right for bands, yeah. yeah. Um, was that kind of more reggae or was that... That was, yeah, a reggae rock band. Okay. Right on. And there's one EP out on Spotify. You can go check it out if you're interested. Nice, nice. Also, my original band, Secret Remedy, also has an EP out with... Dub versions as well done by me. Dude, the so. doobie. All right, I wanted to ask more of a usual interview question. Um, I want to talk earliest musical influence. Okay, well, I know it's it's a big, but what we're going to talk <laughs> about is I want to know what is that first musical influence? What was that first thing that said I want to do that and led you down this terrible twisted road? You go first, or you go first. I'm not trying to think of all of my scenarios. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pull the generic card and say Sublime was a huge influence on me. Right now, cause I'm going to show you something. This I, is my shocked face. What? <laughs> I had an older brother who listened to Sublime and 311 and those bands. And 311. So I, and I, of course, listened to that as well. And then that got me down the rabbit hole of reggae and the roots. So I went backwards into the reggae yeah, you did. world. So Nice. I lived in San Diego, actually, when 311 was really coming up and, mm. and eventually like got big. And uh, every so often you see a show from them, and it was like, well, I'll never get in the door. <laughs> it was yeah. so crazy busy. So crazy popular. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, origin story? Yeah. It goes back. <laughs> I've never thought of calling yeah, it that. Yeah, that's a awesome. simple origin story. <laughs> Where's your villain arc start? The first start? <laughs> very thing that I thought about was, like, being a child and, like, listening to my father sing. I come from an incredibly musical family. Yes, you do. Um, and, Yeah. My, I have my dad, and he plays guitar and, like, taught himself and, like, grew up in, like, Barrio in the Philippines and, like, self-taught himself the guitar. Um, yeah, he's a one-man band, like, musical Filipino man, so. We jammed with him the other yeah, night. Yeah, we jammed with him the other night. It nice. was great. It was really great. So that's my first musical influence for sure. He's always, like, in my corner, my number one fan. So he lives here? He lives here. Ah. Yeah. Which leads me to the next question. If you're in Canada, why do you keep coming back to <laughs> Vegas? So my mom died. Get darker and darker. No, it's fine. <laughs> you would not be the first. Um, how long ago, if I may ask? She died last year. Okay. Yeah, but so, it started out as a coma, and then she died a really oh, slow, geez. gradual death over the course of like two and a half years. And within those two years, there was COVID. Yeah. Um, I was going back and forth to support my family. Uh, my dad really needed me. I was the only one at the time. And then during those moments, my solace was music, and then it kind of got me to where I am now with momentum and all that. Okay. Yeah. So, but I guess what I'm asking is, you were in Vegas. I was in Vegas. I was raised here. But I migrate. My partner's in Canada. She, thank you. Yeah. I was like, Where did Canada come? <laughs> Nobody just says. By the way, I'm going to go through all I'm the gonna trouble. I'm going to go to Canada. I'm going to. I'm going to go through all the trouble for permanent residence in, yeah. in Canada. Yeah. Oh man. That which was I mean, long ass time. Given recent events, 
Good on you. Yeah. Can I correct? <laughs> um, yeah, we have, great. we have some friends. Uh, one's on, I think, the west coast of Canada. Vancouver? I don't remember, to be honest. The other lives on um, Nano, uh, Nanaimo Island. Oh, Nanaimo! Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. They don't live on Nanaimo. Victoria really Island. No, the other... Uh, I have a shirt upstairs. Vancouver Island. No, it's... Uh, Gre- Granville so, Island. No. Ah, How Wisconsin. many islands do I know? <laughs> Q, Q spinning circle. Um, Gabriola. I know that one. Oh, there you go. I'm it's a small. It's a small. Gabriola. Gabriola. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Gabriola. Yes. Gabriola. They live on Gabriola. Gabriola. But Nanaimo is like kind of, I guess, a jumping off point to it or yeah. something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, like about Canada and stuff. A little bit. Okay. A bit. I've got real maple syrup. Hell yeah! <laughs> that's awesome. I almost wore a Canadian shirt for you. Oh, that's so. But sick. I was like, I don't want to make it. I know. A I was thing. like, wow, this guy is so supportive of my Canadian. I'm clearly American. <laughs> I tell you I what, love, some of the it. best things I ever ate were Nanaimo bars. I love Nanaimo bars. My daughter, uh, tangent. My daughter used to be in Girl Scouts, and they had this like kind of like world culture thing where every troop had to bring a different. They picked like a different cult, country, and yeah. her troop brought Canada, and we're like. The Nanaimo bars. We, we got, you know, we got friends and family. They're so... Have you ever had a Nanaimo bar? No. Can we describe it to them? Describe it to us. I, I only had... I, I, I had... I only had it once, but I had like three of them. Oh. Um, it's a, it's a it's, strata. It's, it's a strata. Yeah, it's a layered thing. Of thick. Have you ever had an ooey gooey butter bar? No. You poor... Who you listen! <laughs> wow. I need to get you a Nanaimo bar and yeah. then like an ooey gooey bar. The ooey gooey butter bar isn't... Ooey gooey butter bar. Isn't Ooey that butter cake? Doesn't it feel like it's in the Nanaimo bar? Totally. Yeah. It's like a dense, rich, like graham cracker layer, and then there's caramel. I think you'd really like it. Are you? I don't like caramel. You're actually. not a really sweet yeah. person. It's not. No, Jackie. it's not caramel. Like it's. It's, it's just, just like there. It's uh. just, it exists. Yeah. And it's, then it's, it not adds like a, to it's not like a Twix bar. And then like a layer of chocolate. But it's one of those things oh. that you look at it, you're like, what is this what hot mess? Is that? Yeah. It's just I see layers, and you take a bite, and you're just like, oh. and and it was really really freaking good. A little bit goes a long way. I I felt bad. I felt guilty for going back and saying, can I get another one? Yeah. Because, you know, there's, there's, there, this was for the girls. Yeah, totally. Because you, know? uh, you can explore another culture just from having their food. They're really good. They're yeah. at, like, every Canadian party I've ever gone to. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my God. Beaver the, tails. The, the Nanaimo bars. See, that's funny because I didn't have a beaver. I don't think I've ever had a beaver tail. Oh, wow. Those are You amazing. might be more Canadian than I am. <laughs> I'm already thinking of the memes. I'm just, I mean, <laughs> it's going to be jokes. Um, I've never had a beaver tail. Nice. That's <laughs> beaver. Thanks. I just had stuff. Um, I... <laughs> Bad, Josh. Um, this is why I put the disclaimer at the front. is for me more than anything. Mm. So, <laughs> it's funny because our Canadian friends, when they lived here, never made us Nanaimo bars. The nerve. Well, it just wasn't a thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Anywho, moving on. Yeah. Back to music. <laughs> so, you were a Fountains of Wayne apostle to your classmates? Yeah! <laughs> Talk to us about Fountains of Wayne! Oh my gosh, Fountains of Wayne! <laughs> what was the big hit they had? Stay, stay. Mom. Yeah. Got it going on. That came out when I was in 2003, I think. So I was like in grade seven. Mm. And I was like, wait, what is this band? And there's so much more than Stacey's Mom. That was like the pivotal they track. Re- they remind me of what Alien Ant Farm might have been. I see what you're saying. I was just, yeah, listening, I was just listening to their, to their cover of, of um, Smooth Criminal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I was just like, this. I'm hearing some Stacey's Mom in here. And yeah. I can see it. I can hear it. <laughs> so we talked about early musical influences, getting back to the point of the interview. And um, from there, I wanted to say, what's your favorite show memory? Like, performing together. And, and together. It could be bad. It could be somebody went to jail. It could be... Oh, my God. My favorite one recently was the one we did in Mount Charleston. Mm, and mm. I got really drunk. Because mm. there was nobody. There were, like, five, maybe ten people. Oh, it's one of those kids. It was at the retreat. Yeah. Hey, you want to do that song that we never played? Yeah. Might as well. Yeah. And it's a beautiful space. Shout out to Mount Charleston Retreat. People should go there. Yeah, um, especially because the lodge isn't there anymore. No, it's a beautiful space. Um, we performed there for like two hours, and like we kind of use it as like an opportunity to get drunk and <laughs> and music. sing, play music, and eat mozzarella sticks. As you do. Yeah, that was one of my favorites for sure. Speaking of getting drunk and eating mozzarella sticks, there's my teenage daughter. <laughs> yeah, Hi. I love your sweater. That's so cute. Oh, don't be shy. <laughs> Come in here to get a snack. Aww. For you OG room sixers, she's grown a bit. He's taller. So, uh, hi. Hi. Should we go to booze break? Sure, do that. I want to be food. Booze break. We're back. Um, yeah. So, James. 
<laughs> so you've been Harpo. Any idea? Any plans to go Groucho? Nah, no plans to go Groucho. Right on. <laughs> Harpo's my jam. You. It was a really good... He dressed up as Harpo for how... It was a really good Harpo. Harpo Marx. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. With the horn and the trench coat. And what was Jackie? Um, Did you do a couple's costume? No. Um, the picture was just of him. Of course it was. <laughs> Harpo. Child. I love anyway. that. So... <laughs> getting back to the point of the interview. <laughs> this is correct. We talked about favorite show memories. It was, for you, it was up at Charleston. Yep. Did you have one? Of us playing together? Yeah. Um, probably the most recent Soul Belly one. So with the you... full band. Yeah. That was, that was a nice surprise. That was dope. With the a first cello? Time with the full band. No, it's not. There was no cello. Yeah, he there. lied to me. Who? He brought the cello. He came from another. Oh, okay. Another I assumed that it was like the bass or whatever was hiding inside. Oh it. Yeah. no. Okay. You you promised a cello. I was disappointed, but no. It was really nice to having only ever seen you two perform. Yeah. To suddenly be like, oh, there's the rest of the sound. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was really nice. Um, that was really cool for you to say that on your review. A radio. Your review. Oh. Yeah. Like, I wish I had a radio cha- station channel. Not yet. So, yeah. You know, on your YouTube channel. Like yes. Uh, on my six. On my podcast on YouTube, <laughs> my mom watches on her CDs. And, mm. Sorry. Sorry, mom. You're not watching. You're 87. You don't care. So, <laughs> anywho, before we totally go off the rails here, um, I did want to ask you another kind of usual question, which I hate. All musicians hate getting this question. What's your creative process? No. <laughs> That's, I don't have time for that. <laughs> How would you define your musical style? Elevator pitch, go. How would I define my musical style? Uh, a vibe. Ooh. A bedroom indie pop. Alluring. Captivating. Ooh, what's that? Nice. That, that's really <laughs> good. That's, that literally was. Thank you. A, a bio. That was awesome. <laughs> Um, I let him play all the instruments. <laughs> yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I was looking at some signals. I was like, so he's doing all the instruments. Right on. For answer, I did, yes. And for okay, some of the songs on the upcoming EP. Yeah. I noticed that you were posting some, uh, on, on your Instagram, you were posting like, hey, I got this single out, I got this single out. But on the Cold Summer Records, you just have one, right? Just to the answer? Uh, from Jan, right now it's just answer, and then Melting Into the Night. Night comes out July 8th. Cool. Now, how long have you guys been playing together? Not that long. Not that long. Really? Because it seems like you've been playing just, you've known each other since we were kids or that's something. That's so awesome. I'm glad you said that. Less that's, than a that's year? That's the vibe mm. we want. Less than a year. I think it speaks highly to you, mostly with your musicianship, being able to just listen and, and totally, totally. But, but also, it seems like you he writes some of the music, right? Uh, not really. No. Or you write some of the instrumentation. No. Maybe a little. <laughs> so okay, there are Jan songs. Let's, that, that let's get into it. <laughs> Songwriting process. Go. You I have a song, songs. and then you you play it for him, or what? Yeah, you, we go. Through, I touch him the songs. We go through it. We collaborate, and that's it. From supervision. Right on. <laughs> I put oh. my producer hat on. And then, producer you're hat just on. a prop. <laughs> and then I'll be like, I want, I want it this way, and then we'll tweak it a little bit, and yeah. then. Okay. Cool. Yeah. But I, mean, I, I was picking up more like. You were more of a collaboration situation in like from the get go, but it's really it comes from you. Yeah, James okay. and I. Okay, so James is my bestie's brother in law. Wow, how far that goes. Yeah. yeah, and then we have known our friend Samantha. Shout out Sam has always been like you and James need to work together for like the past X amount of years. So then it wasn't until that wedding in New York, right, where you were like, hey, let's make music and like all this stuff, and then. Finally. I was building the studio. Yeah, yeah, you were building the studio, and you're like, I got this going on, and then, yeah, and then we started talking, and then eventually I flew out to Jersey in like last September. It hasn't mm-hmm. even been a year, and then I signed the Colton Records. And then we finished Answer, and then we did. We did not the, the night. We, we did the whole EP that's coming out in September, and then yeah. Now, how long have you lived in Vegas? Uh, only a few months. He's a fresh Vegas. Four or five months. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So my intro was totally up, like. On it, it was Jersey Boy yeah. turned desert rat. Right. So, how are you liking summer? I like it. Real? Oh, well, it's dry. Like, have you been it's to dry. Jersey? I spent a summer in Jersey. Okay. Yeah, I, I, had, I, had, I had family that lived in Jersey, uh, and I spent many a winter and many a summer back there. I hated it. 
Yeah. I remember sleeping under it with a fan and a sheet, like, uh, uh, over the fan so it would, like, funnel the air. Because the, uh, the house didn't have air conditioning. It's not this house had, like, the old, the keyhole. Mm. You know, it was that old. But, uh, yeah. When you're a kid, you don't realize, like, Jesus right. is a dump. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, all right. So, before we head off upstairs to room six, I wanted to ask you two more questions. Okay? Numero one. What's next, aside from the single coming out, which is probably out by the time this video posts? Yeah. What, what else is on the horizon? Uh, what's on the horizon is taking off with this residency at the Virgin Hotel, at the Shad Room. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to get music out, to practice together, to share our sound, and nope. to meet more of the community. We never talked about when. Oh, we just have to find out the contract. It's fresh. Uh, we found okay. this out last night. So you don't night. know if it's a Sunday so, or should be Thursdays. Thursdays. Yeah. Oh, right on. So Thursdays at the Shag Room. Swing by. Uh, I I dig your music. Like, your music is good. Just sit there and listen and enjoy it, music. Thank you. Right. Like, I mean that as a total compliment. I, I I'm not it. saying, like, it's boring. I'm saying it's... I would... That wasn't the tone I was getting. Yeah, cool. Because I love a good <laughs> vocal run. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, number two. Let's pretend we're talking to Little Jan and Little James. Okay. I like to ask this of all my prey. I like to finish my interviews with this because I talked. We, we talked about the earliest musical influences. Mm-hmm. What do you wish someone had told you before you, or you know, what is that one thing you wish? I wish someone had told me before I got into music. And don't say change your strings. <laughs> Somebody told me that before I got into music. What's a warning you would have given younger you to make your life a little bit, to make the path a little bit easier? Oh, uh, consistency. Work on the consistency. Don't be so distracted by the, the corporate life and pursuing a degree in journalism and marketing. <laughs> yeah. Well, the marketing comes in handy in music. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> totally. It's, it is a business, new people, new, new absolutely. musicians. Absolutely. Absolutely. Treat it like a, treat it like sure. it, it's a job and, and you'll go, you'll go places. Wait, no. Yeah. I retract that. Maybe... You put the consistency. Do it more. Keep doing. Keep you get, going. You get what you get. Out Keep of it. You going get yeah. is what I would tell my little self. There I you would say, it. don't overthink things. Yes, that's a good one. Ooh. It's probably good already. Don't uh, go back and try to fix it. So you're saying, don't be out. a songwriter, because <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> overthink. <laughs> yes. I mean, some of the best songs are not about yeah, yeah. at all. I haven't written a song in a while because I've been happy. <laughs> like, yeah, so I, sh- I have. I have. Everything I, I, I could, you know, every now and then, I have to just step back and be like, life's not so bad. Life's not so bad. Like, I don't have anything to write, but life's not so bad. I'm okay. Um, That's a really good question. I'm like, also, girl, go to, instead of going to UNLV, go fly to the East and go to the conservatory that you were offered mm-hmm. to go to. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, honestly, those are both very valid. I couldn't yeah. say anything better. Um, if anything, I would say to little me, listen to... Listen to your, your instincts. Listen to your gut about all the creative stuff. All the other, the, the right brain stuff will be there. Mm-hmm. And, and yes, there will be times you'll be glad you learned all the different things you learned. Knowledge is never wasted. But creation is never, wa- creativeness is never wasted time. And whatever you're working on, whether, even if it's just, I feel like we're learning a cover song I, I, I like. Yeah. That's not wasted time. What's wasted mm-hmm. time is sitting in the dark, listening to Metallica on your five CD disc changer, wearing black, not being... That it, is so depressing. That was me. <laughs> Freshman year of college. Wow. Into sophomore. And, and, and yeah, go out to shows. Support the go local scene. Go out to shows. Even if you're not old enough to go to the 21 and up shows, go find shows. They're going to be there. Yeah. Because musicians want to play for you. Mm-hmm. Even if you can't afford to buy the merch, even if you can't afford to buy a drink, go support them any way Just you go. can. Yeah, and um, because you'll never regret it. I never regret going out to a thing. I know it's hard to get up. I know it's so much easier to let the inertia take over and just not. Anytime your plans get canceled, isn't that the greatest feeling? <laughs> it's just like, ah, my that's free. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> but there are times where you're just like, ah, that fell through. But it's worth it, and you'll always be happy you did. So that's my that's my five cents. Going to shows is great, but also band camp is really good for bands. 
I you actually could buy LPs. You could buy merch. And yes, buy T-shirts. Yeah, and a lot of times the bands, the bands. Will put, a lot of times the bands will put their lyrics on Bandcamp where you can't really see them anywhere else. Mm. Where and so for someone doing reviews, lyrics are helpful. Yeah, yeah. you just give me such a good idea for merch. You're welcome. Sorry, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> With that, thanks for watching. Stick around. We're gonna go see them up in room six. Um, like I said, if you want to be on the channel, hit me up. If uh, you want to see more videos like this, please, actually, no. We'll talk about that after the uh, performance. In the meantime, I guess we'll temporarily say goodbye. Say goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. See you upstairs. Bye. Hello, I'm Jan Jan, and this is my song, Answer. Emotions automatic, stifling, deciphering if this is worth the panic. Swaying all the questions, playing my impressions, planning out uncertainty as if it's in succession. And it always feels the same. on fingers, loneliness still lingers, left with an ellipsis, losing messages delivered, traveling on tangents, repeating reactions, coasting and floating in the deep end of distractions, and it never heals the same. all that I've been after. I've been after. I've been, I've been after. I tell myself to sell myself a little taller. Parallels align my dreams and never falter. Give it all. All my love still has to offer. Because I I'm Jan Jan, and this is my song, Melting Into the Night. One, two, three, four.
I'm Jan Jan, and this is my rendition of Yokor's Beige. I don't want to see you smile. I want you in the morning before you go. something I don't know and lead me to the place where no one ever goes. Let me go under your skin. Let me find a demon that drives those heavenly limbs. You know you're beautiful, but that ain't treasure in your soul what you got cause I want it all with your fingers in my mouth I fail to see you fall so please don't let me fall please don't let me fall I think we'd survive in the world Plants and roots and dream about electric fans. And baby, could you kill a man? Could you look in his eyes and feel the fire drain out of his hands? And baby, do you think about the past? Do you wonder if every stupid little thing has better? I'm Jan Jan, and this is my song, How Do You Do? One, two, three, four. to my legs to love what's here. 
You hold me, but you don't hold me back. You hold me, but you don't hold me back. You hold me, but you don't hold me. I want to thank Jan Jan and James for coming on. It was a great interview and a great performance. Um, uh, yeah, if you want to be on the channel, like I said, hit me up. If you want to support the channel, please consider clicking the Room 6 social media link down in the description. It'll take you to room6.shop, places where you can find my CDs. It will also take you to the uh, Patreon page where I've got patron-only content just for patrons. It's a one-hour podcast with myself and my whiskey-drinking buddy, Sean Flume, who's also my former drummer. And uh, we talk about whatever we want, and we answer listener questions for an hour called Two Brains, One Bottle. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, really appreciate it. Please click down there, and don't forget to ring the bell. Make sure you click the links down below for their social media. And, uh, yeah, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Really? Neither one of you? All right, cool. Duh. Yeah. <laughs>